Hi, this is Dr. Alan Mendelson from Eye Surgeons and Consultants, and today I'm going to talk about shingles. Shingles is caused by the varicella zoster virus. It is the exact same virus that causes chickenpox, and the varicella zoster happens to be in the family of the herpes viruses. Once a youngster develops chickenpox, the virus actually never leaves the human body. It remains dormant in the neuronal tissue along the spinal cord or brain, but again, it never leaves the body. Years later, more commonly decades later, all of the sun sh shingles will occur, and it occurs in one out of every three adults in the United States, 1.2 million new cases per year. Now, the most common place is on the torso, the chest, or the back, but it's also very, very common for shingles to happen on the scalp, forehead, eyelids, the cheek area. And uh, we'll talk about specifics about that in a minute. But no matter where the location the shingles develops, it should always, when a patient has it, oral antiviral should be initiated immediately, absolutely immediately, and hopefully at all times within 72 hours. By starting the oral antivirals immediately, it greatly decreases the severity of shingles, the duration of shingles, the complications of shingles. So it's really crucial to start the oral antivirals, the sooner the better. Now, as far as the precise location, it's again most common, the torso, the chest, the back, but it's very common to happen on our scalp, our forehead, upper lid, the cheek area, Whenever it happens in these areas, that is referred to as occurring with the fifth cranial nerve. Now, with the fifth cranial nerve involvement, there are three branches of the fifth cranial nerve. The first branch is the ophthalmic, which innervates our forehead, our scalp, the upper eyelid area, most of the eye. That first branch is called the ophthalmic division. Of everybody who has the ophthalmic division involved, 70 to 80% of the time, it gets into the eye. The second branch of the trigeminal nerve is the maxillary branch, which includes the lower eyelid, the conjunctiva, the lower part. Of those, about 20% will develop ocular involvement. The mandibular branch or the third branch is much lower, and it's far, far, far less common to have ocular involvement. Now, one important thing to mention is doctors, nurses, all learn in school that if there's involvement of the shingles, tip of the nose, side of the nose, base of the nose, that is referred to as Hutchinson sign. And that if one sees Hutchinson sign, we are all taught in school that the likelihood of eye involvement is extremely high. And this is factually correct. Unfortunately, a lot of non-ophthalmologists incorrectly extrapolate, and they believe that if there is no Hutchinson sign, then there is no ocular involvement, and that is factually incorrect. Anytime the scalp, the forehead, the eyelids, the face are involved, anytime at all, that involvement itself, there can be eye involvement as well. So you always have to keep your guard up. So any shingles involvement from the face, the forehead, the scalp, somebody should see their eye physician immediately. Now, the eye physician often is the first person to make the diagnosis of shingles. Some patients will go to see their primary care doctor first, a dermatologist, an urgent care center, an emergency room physician, but there are plenty who will go to the ophthalmologist as their first step. Oral antivirals, again, need to be started immediately. If there is eye involvement, we use topical steroids, which are crucial. Now, of the individuals who get it in the eye, I'm going to talk about other complications in a moment. But so I mentioned we go from the fluid-filled blisters at first. Then it becomes more clouded up. Then they scab over. Once they scab over, no longer contagious. Here is a picture showing on the chest. 
Usually the back's even a little bit more common. And here, of course, is the eye involvements. Upper lid, lower lid, the eyelids are very swollen. A conjunctivitis is developed as well. And that is pathognomonic or clear cut. That is shingles involvement. And unfortunately, in this elderly gentleman, he got clobbered with the shingles. You see the scabbed over vesicles, his scalp, his forehead, the side of his face, and his eye got really, really hit hard. Of all the times where there is eye involvement, the eye involvement can be mild to moderate to severe to devastating, devastating meaning the loss of eyesight. Unfortunately, the majority of the cases tend to be moderate to severe, and it is crucial to be very closely monitored so as to save eyesight and prevent complications. Now, of the 1.2 million new cases per year, approximately three to 400,000 of them do have the eye involvement, and that is the number one most common complication of shingles. The second most common complication of shingles is something called post-herpetic neuralgia. So going back to this gentleman who had the severe shingles, hypothetically, if he then had lingering severe debilitating pain in that area, that's referred to as post-herpetic neuralgia, and about 20% of patients have this. And about 10% after shingles, will develop a secondary bacterial infection, which can complicate things. But again, those are the three most common complications, the eye getting hit hard, the post-herpetic neuralgia, and a secondary bacterial infection. But again, by starting the oral antivirals, you decrease the frequency, the severity the, of the complications, and um, it's, it's a much smoother, easier process, even though shingles tends to be an absolutely brutal thing. So in summary, 1.2 million Americans do get afflicted with shingles. It's caused by the varicella, varicella zoster virus. About several hundred thousand get eye involvement. 20% get post-herpetic neuralgia. Others get secondary bacterial infections. Always want to be on oral antivirals. The sooner the better. But again, one should work very closely with the right physician. Now, if it's in the torso, there is not eye involvement. But anywhere, the face, the forehead, the scalp, see your eye physician immediately. Thank you very much.